Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some farmhouse Dollar Tree kitchen DIYs for you. And I am also so grateful and so thankful to Bethany from Bargain Bethany for collaborating with me. I feel so blessed and I just wanted to give her a big thank you. So if you're coming over from Bethany's channel, welcome. I am so happy to have you. And with all that being said, let's jump right into today's DIYs. Okay friends, so we're gonna start off by taking, I believe I used eight packs of large stir sticks that I got from Home Depot for 98 cents a pack. I just measure everything out. So all together, you're gonna need 12 front and back pieces, eight or 12 side pieces, eight square dowels, and eight bottom pieces. And what we're gonna do is create little crates. Now I will leave all the measurements in the description box below. And um, it, these were super duper easy to put together. Once I got all the measurements cut, it really was nothing to it, especially if I had the measurements already, I could put these together in minutes. So uh, like I said, I laid everything out and this is how I just kind of figured out how big I wanted my crates. And I also forgot to mention that you are gonna need four yardsticks as well and I had my husband sand them down so that way I could paint or if you want to stain it that's totally up to you. So like I said the longest part was figuring out the measurements. Once I had everything cut then I did go ahead and I sanded down all the rough edges and I also wanted to mention please bear with me you guys I got a new camera and a new tripod. I wanted to try a different um you know filming approach so while I figure that out please bear with me so once I had everything sanded down then I did just go in with some white Waverly chalk paint and I painted all the pieces now originally I would stain this however I do have a wall that is like brown wood faux brown wood so I knew that if I stained it it you wouldn't really be able to see it so once I had all the pieces painted, then I do take a little bit of hot glue as well as a dab of um, wood glue and I start with the wooden dowels right on either side of one of the longer stir sticks. Now this is going to be the side of our crate. So I then lay out the bottom piece. I glue it down the exact same way. That way when we put our middle piece down, then it's perfectly even. So I do all four sides of those. Once I had all four of those put together, then I start by assembling the side pieces. So basically I'm just doing the exact same thing. I am taking some wood glue and some hot glue and just lining those side pieces up with the front pieces. So I did one side and then I move on to the next side. Next, I take the side that I had already put together and I just glue either side at the same time and you want to be quick because you're not going to be able to pull that back up to glue the other side. So I, like I said, just put glue on both sides and I just worked pretty quickly to secure that into place. And look, you guys, this is taking shape already and like I said, this did not take me long at all. So now we're going to assemble the bottom piece and I assemble the bottom piece exactly how I assembled the front and back pieces. I start on one side, I glue that down again with some hot glue and some wood glue because the wood glue is going to make the glue last and then the hot glue is going to secure it quickly so that it stays together and you don't have to clamp it down and all that fun stuff. So I start with one side, I then do the opposite side, and then I secure down the middle pieces. So 
so once I had our crates assembled then I just lay out my yardsticks and also okay so you do need two middle pieces to hold the crates on I'm sorry you guys I will leave all the measurements down below like I said so I just lay them out and I lay the crates right underneath to try to figure out um, how far apart I want these now I did want this bottom opened because in my kitchen I have a very small kitchen and we put like cases of water and propel underneath so I did want a spot for that stuff to be kind of out of the way and um, so that is why I left my bottom open but you can make a third crate and put that at the bottom that's totally up to you so like I said I just lay this out I glue down my middle pieces and then to secure these so that way I know they won't go anywhere that is why we're going to use four yardsticks rather than just one so I uh, again I glue them with wood glue and hot glue and then I sandwich them together I also laid out the sign that I'm going to be using for the top that way I could have the crates um far enough apart that way you can see the sign I then again secure it with some hot glue and wood glue where the crate goes I laid the crate down and then I clamped them down so that I can make sure that they stay nice and secure Next, I take this Easter sign that I got from Dollar Tree. I start by taking the little galvanized bunny off of the front and then I cut the handle off of it. I then take some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. I fill those holes in and then I give this a not so full coat of this chalkboard paint that I also got from Dollar Tree. I like to have some of that brown showing through because you're just basically reversing dry brushing so it kind of looks like weathered wood. Now I am going to let you guys know that originally this is how I made this sign and I used my chalk couture letters to spell out farm fresh produce and I just wasn't crazy about it. I'm OCD, so the lettering, it just was not my style, I guess you could say. So I did just want to show you this just in case you wanted to make yours this way. I also did um, transfer on farm to table at the bottom with a different font. And like I said, I just wasn't crazy about it, but I did want to show you um, in case you do like it and you want to put this sign at the top of your um, little produce stand and this was inspired by Bark and Bethany. She was inspired by one of my projects so when I had reached out to her to collab um, she came up with the idea that I could make a project inspired by her so this is where this idea came in. So I just secured the sign with some hot glue and then I went in with my antique Waverly Wax to give it some distressing and make it look weathered and old. Now after I did all this is the moment where I stood this up and I looked at it and I was like okay well I like it but I'm not crazy about it so um, here in a little bit we are going to change out that sign. Next, I take these labels that I believe I got from Dollar Tree, you guys. I have a problem where once I get home from shopping, I like to take everything out of the package and put it away. So I can't remember if it was Dollar Tree or if I got it somewhere else. But I did take these labels and on one I put fruits and on the other one I put veggies. I then just secured them to the front with some hot glue to the front of each crate I should say with some hot glue. I then did the same exact thing that we did with the first sign. I took my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree, I filled in those holes, and then I ended up going in with some white Waverly chalk paint instead. I then took my utility knife 
and this particular sign was from Christmas time and it kind of looked like wood pieces put together so I took my utility knife and I just free handed a line that way this looks like faux wood right down the seams of where it would be wood put together if that makes sense now I made you guys free printables. I have this linked in the description box below. So I went on my computer and I created this little sign. I took my Arteza graphite paper and I traced over it, leaving the image behind. And then I went in with my Arteza paint pen and I went over all of that wording. Next, I go in with my mini chip brush and again that antique way really wax I dry brush all the way around the edges and then I take a blending brush and my distress ink that I got from Amazon which my Amazon store is linked in the description box as well so anything that I can link for you guys will be in the description box I just go over my sign randomly there's no rhyme or reason just to give it some distressing and again make it look old and then I drew some faux screw holes where the wood planks would meet I then just glued it down to where the other sign was and then you guys that was it now I know this can look intimidating but I promise you guys it was so easy to do and I know that you guys can do it too if you just put your mind to it if you need to watch this over it's not a problem when I first started crafting um, I cra I've been crafting for a while since I was a kid but if I wanted to do something I would just watch a video over and over again until I got it but I promise you guys this was not hard at all and I cannot believe the way this turned out I am so happy with the way that it looks especially in my kitchen with all the decor so if you're new here, my name is Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my absolute favorite and specialty and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love it if you would stick around by clicking that red subscribe button. And then to be notified when I upload, just tap that bell right next to the subscribe button and then all. That way you don't miss a single Dollar Tree moment. Also, again, I wanted to give a big shout out to Bethany from Bargain Bethany. Again, thank you so much. And I'm sure all of you know who she is because she's literally the Dollar Tree guru. But if you haven't, I will leave her information down below. She does very similar projects as mine. She loves to build like I do. So definitely go in the description box and click her link or just type in Bargain Bethany and she'll pop right up. Thanks Bethany. For the next project I start off with this faux cutting board from Dollar Tree and I take some white Waverly chalk paint and paint over that image. Now it is a really cute image but I wanted to go a different route with this. So once I had that painted with two coats then I take a roll of brown craft paper from Dollar Tree. I measure out where that front of the sign is and then I cut that down. This doesn't have a tube in it so it was really easy to cut down and then I take two large stir sticks. Actually I only used one. I take a large stir stick, I cut off one end and then I measure the other end and I cut that down as well. I put this on my little cutting mat and I went with my utility knife and I cut that straight down the middle. I have found that if you cut these in half it doesn't work they just break apart unevenly but if you take a utility knife and cut them down then they do cut pretty straight once I had it cut down then I go in with my finger sander which is also linked in my Amazon store in the description box and I just sand down those edges where I just cut them I make sure that they're gonna fit and then I take a round dowel rod that I got from Dollar Tree and again I measure that out and cut that down with my miter shears. I then go in with my Kona stain and I just stain all three of those pieces. Next I take my cursive 
uh, font from Chalk Couture and I just transfer on notes to the top of this cutting board and I do dry it with my drying tool right in um, or in between letters that way it doesn't come up on the back of the transfer when I am transferring the next letter. Next, once again, I go in with my mini chip brush and some antique Waverly Wax and I just dry brush all around that white part and in the middle. I then took these little square wooden pieces from Dollar Tree and I take my miter cutter and I just cut that in the middle. You guys, this cut like butter. I don't even know if this is real wood. I mean, I think it is, but the way that it cut... I haven't really ever seen wood that cut like that so you could probably use scissors and then I just stained that with the antique wax and I glued them down to where the dots are at the top of the white part of this cutting board next I just cut that brown roll down so that it would fit in between them and then I take my round dowel rod and I put it through the roll of craft paper you guys will probably hear Bella in the background she's out in the living room playing while I'm trying to do this so um, you guys always say that you love the baby sounds so if you hear her that's why but I did cut little pieces of a popsicle stick and put them on either end of the large ones that way you can slide your brown paper through very easily and then I glued them down at the top and at the bottom and I did just put a dab of hot glue on either side I then just put my paper through and then that was it for this one I wrote out a list this was just a quick list of the first things that I could think of just so that way you guys can see how functional this piece is and I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments down below which project is your favorite and I just love the way that this turned out so moving on this is a super duper easy project I took these little wall planters from Dollar Tree and I just cut off the backing I then took my chalk couture transfers and I transferred on basil, thyme, and oregano on each of them. And again, in between, I just dry each letter. That way, the letter doesn't come up with the next letter. You guys, this was so easy that I want to make them for different things. I literally love the way that they turned out. This is one of my favorites but you guys know that I can't ever pick a certain favorite but I definitely love the way that these turned out and I love the chalk couture paste because you literally can just scratch off or take a q-tip because this was a rounded edge um, some of it bled just a little bit so I did just go in with my detail tool and I just scratched off the parts um, that kind of bled and then I took some floral foam I put it down in each of them and then I just had some random greenery I went on my phone and kind of looked at each herb to get the right greenery and then I just put the greenery in there you guys and look how cute these are they're perfect for springtime when I cannot wait to get outside and plant some plants I want to thank Chrissy, Melinda, and Angel for buying me a coffee. If you guys enjoy my work and you would like to buy me a coffee as well and get a shout out each week, then go to buymeacoffee.com slash allthingscrafty or the link is in the description box. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Moving on to the next project, I take this tray from Dollar Tree and I give it two good coats of that chalkboard paint that we used previously. Once that was dry, I took a large popsicle stick, cut off each end, and then I lay them out on the bottom of this and I cut four pieces and I will, um, and I stain them with my Kona stain. I then took those little dowel rod ends, I don't know what they're called, but I painted those black as well. 
and then I took my white Waverly chalk paint and these jars from Dollar Tree. You guys, I saw these jars. My best friend Nicole from The Week's Nest uses them all the time, and I wouldn't have even seen them if it wasn't for her. So go check out her channel because she uses these jars and a bunch of other stuff all the time. But I did want to thank her for showing me these jars because I literally love them so much. But I did uh, paint one of the jars white. I then wanted that green moss color, but I didn't want it as bright. So I did just take some of the moss and some white and mixed it together to get just a toned down green to bring out some of the greenery in my kitchen. And then I also painted, um, it was like a candy jar, um, that I got from Dollar Tree as well. And I painted that with mineral Waverly chalk paint. I then just did the exact same thing with the popsicle sticks. I cut them down with my utility knife because when I assembled the bottom of this tray, I wanted it to look like shiplap. Um, there was still a gap, so I did just cut pieces down, stain them, and then I glued all them down with some hot glue. And then I stressed those little knobs, and then I glued them down to the lids. So I did uh, print you or create you guys some free printables for these as well. I made sugar, coffee, and tea labels, and I made them bigger for canisters or smaller for labels like this. So all that is in the description box. And then I took my finger sander once again and distressed all of the jars, really focusing on the details. I wanted those details to show through. And next, I just took a bead of hot glue with some jute and I wrapped the jute around all of the necks of these jars. Next, I take some more jute on my label and I just kind of pinch it in like a V and glue it to the back of these labels and tie them to the back. Once I had them tied, then I cut off the excess and I wanted these labels to kind of stand up so I just put a bead of hot glue on the back and I glued them down to the front. Last but not least, I took my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and once again I dry brushed all the way around the edges of our tray as well as where the faux shiplap is. I just think I just think this gives it such a nice detail and makes it look very farmhousey and old and weathered so that is why I love to do it all the time and you guys seem to love it as well so look how amazing these turned out I wanted to show you what it looked like by my coffee pot as well as on my hutch and I literally love it on either side of the kitchen so let me know if you guys like it by the coffee pot or on the hutch if you guys didn't know, I have a VIP group on Facebook called All Things Crafty VIP. And if you want to win this project that I created, go over on Facebook, answer all the questions, join, and then comment on the post with this, and you will be entered to win. So moving on to another super duper easy project, I just took these labels that I had, or tags, I should say, that I had in my stash. Again, I will leave the free printable to these dishcloths and handcloths um, in the description box. I transferred them on. At first, I used chalk, and then I also did use my graphite paper, and I could see it. Transferred that on, took some jute, tied it, and then I glued the label as well so that it would stand up. And then I put them in my kitchen with some hand towels and dishcloths. And look how amazing these look, you guys. I love the way that they turned out. If you're coming over from Bethany's channel and you saw my little shelf, that is the shelf that she drew inspiration from. And I literally could not be more honored. Okay guys, last but not least, I had this farmhouse sign in my kitchen for probably two years and I wanted to change it up. If you don't have a piece of wood like this, just use Dollar Tree signs. On my channel, I use the Dollar Tree longer signs all the time. So if you need to know how to put one together, I will leave a link 
in the cards above and I just took my bed and breakfast chalk couture transfer which I will also leave a link for in the description box and you can cut it apart and transfer it on however you like this is how I decided to do mine I then just distressed the edges with again some antique wax and I love the way that this looks on my hutch let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. Again, I want to thank Bethany for including me. Here is the shelf again that she drew inspiration from. I will also leave that uh, project in the cards in the right hand corner if you guys are coming over from her channel and want to see that video. I am so grateful to her. She's literally so sweet. So show her some love you guys if you are the one of few that aren't following her go over and subscribe to her let her know that i sent you and i always love to close out and let you guys know that if nobody has told you today you guys are absolutely gorgeous and wonderful you are worthy and i love you with all my heart and soul i'm so grateful to you guys if you guys are still around, leave a yellow heart if you can. If not, just let me know that you can't leave a heart, but you're still here. I appreciate you guys so, so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much, Bethany. Bye.